Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel and to another video with my Porsche Cayenne. Now, if you are enjoying these videos, please do consider subscribing if you're one of my 73% of regular viewers that have not done so already. It really helps the channel out. Now, the Cayenne is a very inviting way into Porsche ownership because despite the fact you can get some 986 and 987 boxes and even 996 and 911s now at very enticing prices, none of those offer such a comprehensive package as the KN. Ordinarily saying to your wife or partner out of the blue that you're going to buy a Porsche would probably induce in them some form of minor fight or flight response. Additionally to that, if you were to sit down your five-year-old and explain to him that he's gonna to walk to school every day now because you've replaced the S-Max for a Boxster S, or in fact that he needs to go and have a double leg amputation procedure because you've now bought a Porsche 911, well, none of those situations are ideal. However, with the KN, none of that matters because it is a well and truly practical Porsche. If you do go ahead and buy a KN and your wife and your family still think you're crazy, well, then there's plenty of room to bundle them in and take them to the nearest Peugeot dealership because that's clearly where they belong. And then you can pick them up again in a few weeks when they've decided to finish their strike. So there's no split folding tailgate like one would find on a Range Rover, but there are two ways in which you can open the boot. One is like so, the conventional way, like on most cars. And the other is through this hidden button by the wiper that opens this glass hatch here, which is ideal for something small or shopping bags. And actually, in my case, I prefer to use that method because the struts on the main part of the boot for me are, well, very much on their last legs, as you can see. And well, in the interest of not being decapitated by my KN, I prefer to use the glass hatch. If you are planning on disposing of any family members, though, that are anti-Porsche, then, well, I'd recommend using this method. It'd be easier for access. Under the boot floor, there is this nicely thought out area with a spare wheel in which the tire comes deflated, I guess to save space. Then there's this nicely thought out toolkit and a couple of storage gubbins either side. On this side, I think it houses what once was the system for the DVD player on the old PCM. And on this side is a nice little storage compartment, which I have a little bit of oil in, which the previous owner kindly left for me. Also, this car has a factory fitted dog guard, which probably should suffice for most four-legged friends, although my parents' Labrador tends to think otherwise. In the back, there's three seats and loads of space. In fact, no decapitations will need to be arranged if you're planning on transporting people in the back of your KN. Everything in here feels solid and tactile. I think generally we associate Porsche with having a nimble and delicate and sprightly nature, but the KN is different. It feels rugged, well-built and safe and like it could take you absolutely anywhere, similar to the feeling you get in a Range Rover. And before you ask me if I think the KN is better than the Range Rover, well, don't, because that would be like asking me to choose between children. Although having said that, wait a couple more weeks and I'm sure I'll be able to decide. And then in the front, there's plenty of space to put your things. There's two storage compartments to choose from in the middle. There's ample storage bins either size, a really good size glove box. Although having said that, the cup holders are a little bit scrawny. I suppose they were designed at a time when a Starbucks drive through wasn't an essential part of every single journey. But in fairness, practicality might not be your biggest concern when it comes to pulling the trigger on a KN, perhaps it's reliability. So let's speak about that next. The R word then, reliability. Always a cause for concern when buying a near on 20 year old car, especially when it has a Porsche badge on it and weighs well over two tons. But in my opinion, this should never be a problem if you're able to be sensible and by sensible, I mean realistic. When you buy a car like this, you need to have some money aside or be able to budget each month for inevitable repairs. You can also make sure you buy a car that's been looked after by its previous owners with lots of records of money being spent and services being completed. I always find that cars that haven't been heavily modified tend to have been looked after better too. There seems to be a certain group of people that buy these sorts of cars because they're cheap and then any spare money they have goes on horrible chrome bits and nasty grills. And that comes in lieu of regular maintenance. You know when you see an old air suspension car like a 2000s S-Class sat on a driveway and it's got the big bad boy wheels, it's got a exhaust system, it's tinted all round, but the suspension's collapsed on all four corners. It's on bald tires. 
and it hasn't been serviced in over a decade. That's what I mean. But luckily, those sorts of cars are pretty obvious and easy to avoid. And if you approach maintenance proactively as opposed to reactively, it's fairly straightforward and not too scary when you break it down. Take my car, for example. Last week, we took it to ePorsche and did a full inspection and we made a video. So if you haven't seen that, you can click in the top left-hand side of the screen now. But now we're able to compile a list of all of the things that this car is going to need in the nearish sort of future. And based on what we discovered, I'd estimate that this car probably needs around £2,000 spent on it in the next year. And then if we do all of those bits and bobs, I think maybe in another year's time, it might need some new brakes and hoses, maybe tyres, things like that. Let's call it another two grand. But I think after that, the year after, fingers crossed, it would only need about 500 quid spent on it to cover a service and a few other tiny bits. So over three years, let's call that four and a half thousand pounds in maintenance. Now that is 36 months. And so if I was to put the money aside each month to cover that, it would only be 125 pounds a month which when you think about the average UK car finance payment now being 490 quid, it doesn't sound all that bad, does it? Now I know that because it's an older car, it's probably gonna be a lot more expensive on fuel. It will probably cost more in road tax. It might even cost more in car insurance with the way that works sometimes. But one thing that is good is that, well, I paid 3,800 pounds for this thing and I don't think it matters how many miles I put on it, as long as I keep it, in the condition it's in now and regularly maintain it, I'm pretty sure as and when I want to sell this thing, I could probably get my money back. And I don't think the same can be said for newer alternatives always. The other nice thing to know is because this is old tech, some horrible criminal can't waltz up to my door at night, intercept the signal from my key and drive away with my car. Now obviously the figures I've just made up there are estimates. It could be much more than that. It could be much less but what you do get in return i think is totally worth it what surprised me most with this kn is the way that it drives now bearing in mind this one is the v6 and it doesn't have any of the fancy air suspension or active chassis control gubbins that the nicer posher ones have it holds the road remarkably well I have never driven a car this big with so much steering feel. And in fact, after driving many Porsches and owning a Boxster S before this, if you blindfolded me and asked me the, the make of car that I was in, I would say Porsche. And then I'd only be very surprised when you took that blindfold off me and I saw how high off the road I was. It carries that same sensitivity as its much sportier siblings. And when you look at the thing, it's just unfathomable. The truth is though, that there is a trade-off and that is that it's a pretty firm ride. Unless the road is made of pure velvet, then it's not the most supple cruiser out there. I'm never quite sure whether I've hit a pothole or run over the neighborhood cat again. However, smaller wheels and air suspension were an option on these and on the turbos, the air suspension at least, was standard. I've got no doubt that that would offer you a softer ride setup should you want it. The V6 engine in this car Although underpowered for its weight, packs a punch with its character. Of course, it's an iconic engine, the VR6, that was used in the R32 Golf. And it is so, so responsive. I can't quite believe the throttle response under my right foot. It's quite something special. And it sounds great too. Some people the Tiptronic gearbox would be of concern, but for me it really suits the car. Okay, it's not anything on a new ZF system or even Porsche's latest PDK, but it never leaves you hanging for a gear. It always gives you what you need. I also find the Tiptronic buttons on the steering wheel very satisfying to use as well, which is more than can be said for most modern cars with the horrible plasticky flappy paddles. So I would actually use the word exciting to describe the way that this thing moves along the road. If you want to have a bit of fun in this car, even though it's only 250 horsepower and over 2,200 kilograms, it is good fun. Let me just put my foot down now. Second gear, 20 miles an hour. I'm going to plant it. We're going into a 50. That's 50 now, but 
you hear that sound, it's absolutely gorgeous. And then when you do get to the corners, you, you honestly get so much feel. It really is quite dramatic, quite surprising. And if you haven't driven one of these cars, I think you'd be very, very surprised. And so now here we are back in reality in a traffic jam in the rush hour on a Friday afternoon, which, you know, this is normally the experience you're gonna have in your KN. This is probably what you're gonna be using it for, for its daily duties. And despite what I said about the ride quality, obviously at speeds like this, well, we're, we're not moving, but at speeds around town, it's not really an issue. It's firm, but it doesn't bother you. And actually when you do wanna do some miles in it, you're normally on motorways, and despite what we all moan about with our roads in the UK, the motorways for the most part are pretty good. I mean, apart from all the bloody lane hoggers and tailgaters, but the surface at least is, is fine. And actually, yeah, for those longer journeys, I haven't got any complaints at all, really. The fuel economy is bad, yes. I've been averaging about, well, just over 19 miles per gallon. But then again, I've not really been trying to extract range out of this thing. I will be doing that at some point in a challenge video. And I'm pretty sure I can get, well, a lot more than 19 but at the same time although it is terrible economy it's a 100 litre tank so you're not filling it up all the time because that will do you even at that sort of mpg around 500 miles quite comfortably i also think and bear in mind this is not the posh car with all of the i don't know double glazing and suede headliner it's very quiet it's very well insulated in here you don't really notice anything going on around you which was also quite surprising i thought it would be a little bit more tinny in feel i thought you'd feel a bit more exposed to everything outside, but you really don't. It does feel, as I said in the back of the car earlier, tactile, chunky, very well built, very safe, and like I say, sort of feeling that you can go anywhere in it, which is just wonderful, and actually one of my favorite things about this car. <laughs> it does sound good, this thing, it really does. And if you've got this far in the video and you're thinking you might want to go and look at KNs, well, there's nothing I'm really going to suggest that you look out for in particular but just find one that's been looked after find one that's got good service history then just go for it these are great cars and the driving pleasure you get for such a small entry cost really is well i think i think they're they're a bargain actually so uh, as you can see i'm a huge fan of this car yes i'm only about a month and a bit into to ownership now nothing has gone wrong yet and so at the moment i'm away with the fairies in the honeymoon period if you like but if you do subscribe to the channel i promise you there'll be more videos coming with this car good and bad we will be getting some of those bits fixed back at e-porsche in a few weeks time as i mentioned and i will be doing a fuel economy run in this at some point i've also got myself a set of 18 inch wheels which i'm going to pop onto the car to see if that helps the ride quality in any way but for now then i'm going to thank you for watching this video thank carly again for sponsoring it and I'll see you all hopefully in the next one very, very soon.